computer. All right, here we go. Well, I'm going to say good morning. Happy Monday. Happy President's Day. You know, I was like, this is so great. There's no traffic coming to work today. I didn't realize that people were off, just not us. So, <laughs> so here we are. And I'm just so happy to be with y'all. But um, yes, so the traffic will be lovely, but uh, the banks may not be open. So there's that. I'm here though. But Maria's here. Yes. Um, but at any rate, we're talking about how to win luxury listings through actually the luxury buyers. So I had seen on Inman some really interesting statistics and it gave me a great idea. You know me, always looking for the new, the new ways, that, you know, because listen, if, if there's one thing we can say about real estate, would you guys all agree it's always changing, right? It's kind of like life. And if we're not changing with it, then what are we doing, people? So it gave me an idea. And uh, last week I was at many events. I was at so many events. Heck, I'm still tired, but <laughs> we had our roundtable events. We had our, our events. I was in events in Ocala. We had the uh, with the Abdina event. We had our hint sponsorship event. We had so many things. I had a lot of events. It was fabulous. And the great thing about that was it also gave me the opportunity to realize the importance and the power of social media. And also we released, uh, re-released into the wild a new and better version of our wonderful, um, if you guys didn't see it, our Instagram reel. You guys all see the new and improved Instagram reel out there. That thing has gone viral. It's got some great, um, is, Ali uh, is Alicia on? I don't know if Alicia's on. Do I have Alicia on here yet? Or Alejandro? Well, it's got some really great traction. Hey, Carrie, do you know how much traction our new uh, retake on the video is? I don't know. I know it's really great, though. Like 5,000. Yeah, know. it's over 5,000. I mean, it's, it's moving. It's moving and shaking. So the point is, it's a great way to get in front of people. But the more important thing is, how do you get luxury listings, guys? You know, well, who wants you to sell their home? They want you to sell your home if you have the luxury buyers, right? Does that make sense? So... I want to share. I'm going to share my screen here. Let's just jump on in. Let's get from the start. So here's some interesting stats. So we know that the luxury real estate in the end of 23 actually finished really high. It had a significant increase of 4.2% in properties, with a, which was an impressive soar of 14.2% year over year. So it increased in the luxury market, okay? So as other markets, as we know, last year were down significantly, the luxury market was up by the end of the year. New listings experienced a boost, rising over 14.2% in the single family market and 7.2% in attached properties at the same time. So this is definitely important for us to take a note of because, again, it's the luxury market that started taking off towards the end of the year. Now, I mentioned in our markets, the beginning of January, the first two weeks, it was like, crickets. but by week three in January, it was like the market took off. The, the Thank goodness the water valves were turned back on. But wow. where you really see a huge uptick, tick, guys, is for sure in the luxury sector. So- Social media's impact on luxury buyers, they saw 73% of affluent customers have admitted to being influenced by social media. Yeah. How interesting is that? Instagram, yeah. YouTube, and TikTok have emerged as the top platforms for the <laughs> customers. Guys, this is important for us to pay attention to. And the fact is that people are admitting it, right? <laughs> so that's another thing, right? Let's, hey, Blake, everybody, uh, he doesn't have his camera on, but I'd like to introduce a, a blank screen to Mr. Blake Hunter, who has joined our team. So hello, Blake. Let's all say hi to the blank screen of Mr. Blake Hunter. <laughs> anyway, back to this. So the important thing here, guys, is to note that they the luxury customers are out and they're on, and I've been saying it, we know Instagram, we know TikTok has emerged. We're going to talk about that in a second. But YouTube, let's talk about the power of YouTube. I know a lot of us love Instagram and TikTok. YouTube is not, it's more than just social media. It's where people are going for content. And if you're using YouTube, what else can you use it for, guys? You could use it as the main platform where you create the content and then you take pieces 
that you use for your Instagram and your TikTok and your Facebook or whatever you want to use, right? So that's the point. You don't have to recreate the wheel for all of these things. You can use one longer video and splice it, right, to create your wheel. So that's the great thing about this. Now, TikTok for the younger generation, specifically ages 18 to 24. I don't know about you guys, but how many luxury sectors live in 18 to 24? I'm just saying. But 64% acknowledged its influence to desire to, to purchase a specific type of home. And the platform with the bite-sized video walkthroughs is really good for millennials, but the younger millennials and Generation Z. I think the great thing about TikTok, guys, is the ease of use. Would you guys agree? It's very easy to create a reel on TikTok. But one thing you need to be aware of is if you put it onto Instagram, Instagram is going to kill it. Because the watermark exists when you create it on TikTok, Instagram is going to bury it because they are competitors. Just like if you use a YouTube link on Facebook, it will go nowhere. Facebook and Instagram and, you know, WhatsApp, they're all owned by the same company. We know Mark Zuckerberg does not like sharing, is not caring in his world, okay? So YouTube doesn't care. TikTok doesn't care, but Mark does. So, so we have to be very conscious of that fact. So if you've created it in TikTok because it's easier to use, don't try to put it over into your Instagram. It will not work. It's unfortunate. Now, I'm not to say TikTok isn't great. I'm not going to say don't use it. But again, do you think you're going to find much luxury buyers on TikTok? I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying that. But it has been shown that the folks that are using TikTok, again, are the, you know, the younger Generation Z, right? And the younger millennials. So I'm just saying, if it were me, I would probably put my time into the Instagram reels. Would you guys agree with that? Okay. Now let's take a peek at this. Of the moment, luxury homes, vertical country clubs, branded residents, and golf-style hybrid communities are what social media luxury buyers are looking for. So today's affluent buyers are more discerning than ever, and this is what they want to see. Luxury, privacy, wellness, amenities. So those of you who joined the Adina event, hello, wellness amenities. Lifestyle experiences, guys, and the latest technology. These are things that you could be doing some really great content on. So when you're walking through a home, just, just walk through a home. Look at these things. What type of lifestyle experience are they going to be getting in this lifestyle? What kind of technology do they have? Okay, great. It's a smart home. What's, what's different about the smart home? Listen, the technology has changed a ton. So what is new about this community? What is new uh, about this technology? And the wellness amenities. Look, Lake Nona is constantly also changing the wellness amenities. And those of you here, what is the name of that the thing? God, I'm blanking out. The big facility that they have that they in the medical oh, city. Um, I know. Wellness. Well, I know Claremont's doing the wellness way. Yeah, Claremont has the wellness way. But in, in Lake Nona, they have that huge facility where they have all the businesses in there. But they host a big event once a month, usually, uh, in that facility that I cannot think of the name of. It's right next to the Ronald McDonald House. Yeah. But, um, but they host a wellness event at least once a month about what's new going on in the wellness industry. I highly recommend it's open to everybody that you go because it's free. You find out about it from the Lake Nona social media page. And why wouldn't you? Great social media content. Again, this is how people are finding. Again, if you find a pathway to luxury buyers, you will find a pathway to luxury sellers. Because if you can show them that you have buyers, who doesn't want you to list their home? No, I'm sorry. We don't want you. We want somebody who doesn't have anybody, right? Hello. <laughs> well, I mean, we already have. <laughs> Well, right. We already have, well, I work with, with Sotheby's, right? We have the global exposure. We're out looking for buyers. We're the ones who are putting your home in front of the most affluent buyers, wherever they are, right? We already have Premier Sotheby's. We are your marketing company. We are creating all unique marketing pieces for the wherever we are. And then we have you, 
But what if part of your story is that I come with a whole group of, of social, you know, of luxury buyers who are already interested in wellness, who are already interested in this type of lifestyle, who are already interested, you know, does that not help build your story about why they want to work with you? And then if it's a luxury um, lifestyle experience, then you farm that lifestyle. This is the whole point. This becomes part of your farming experience. You decide, is it a wellness amenity that you're going to work on? Then you farm that area that has those wellness amenities. Does that make sense? You look to connect and put together the buyer's with the sellers. If you can do that, guys, that is magic. That's when you could, because guess what? Then you can actually sell your listings. Now you start selling the listings. Now you get more listings. This is how you do it. So this is the point. If you can have the buyers already in the interest line wanting to learn more, you can show that you have this whole, you know, maybe wonderful blog about it, wonderful social media about it, wonderful people asking questions, engaging with you. You show that to a seller who's got that type of wellness amenities or whatever this is, whatever content you decide you want to be the, the master of, do you not think it will help you get that listing? Does that make sense? So we have to look for every way possible to give us the edge. So in my opinion, this will help do that. Okay, let's see. Now, here's another one. It is all about content, guys. And who has more content than Sotheby's? I'm sorry, anybody? Anybody want to share? Anybody? <laughs> right. And does anybody know for the gold star of the group, does anybody want to say where this came from? Flavia, you know. Where does this come from? You can get the gold star. It's yours. It's right there. <laughs> Yeah, where does this come from? Real estate resilience, building for an uncertain future. You know where the the luxury outlook for twenty. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this comes from the luxury outlook, which we're going to go to in a second. So it's all a great, great content. Here's some ideas, guys, for content. Again, I'm a big proponent of a social media content calendar, but if you're trying to, just like you farm, right? This is backwards farming, if you think of it. I, backwards sounds bad. Uh, Re-engineered, for the engineer in the room, re-engineered farming, right? Instead of just looking for listings, we're looking for the buyers to then put to the listings. Does that make sense? So you want to come up with a content area because if you know you want to sell to an area that is investor driven, then you want to get a bunch of international buyers so that you can bring them to homes that might find the buyer profile being international. Does that make sense? So a great idea for content would be why international buyers are buying here. So you could do a whole bunch of wonderful pieces on why international buyers buy here. Another one is why the real estate market has stayed a strong investment. Guys, there's so many great pieces you could be doing on that. New types of communities and living. This is a fabulous one, right? We've got some really new, great things coming to the area. Uh, you know, one thing I would highly recommend if you're going to do any of these, create yourself a relocation guide. Now, Alex has one. I would take that and I would build upon it, right? Because you don't, first of all, we love Alex, but you want your information on it. Okay. We don't want to send him somewhere else. We want it to go to you. And then we want to talk about what it's like when you're relocating to the area, all the resources and the tools and the things that you need right? That's the kind of content you want to have in this relocation guide. So we have one that you can start with and then you can build upon it and add your own good stuff to it. Does that make sense? And where would you create this? What tool would you use for 20? Maybe we'll make it 50 to put your relocation guide in. No, not active pipe. Rat. What? No. It flips, it flips. Presentation swing. I think I think it's a Monday. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we would create it in presentation suite. And I guarantee you, which we could go look at if we have time, which we may, that if we go into presentation suite and we go under my templates, the relocation guide that Alex created is in there. So if not, I have it and we could add it into yours. Okay. 
continuing strong demand for buyers and restored confidence among builders and developers. This is a great one, guys, because there's a lot of new communities that have been coming to Central Florida. Yeah, you like that one over there. So that is a really good one. And if you wanted to do a thing on actual new communities, this would be a great topic that you might want to work with. Buyers steer money towards sustainable homes. This is a really good one. Uh, how about hybrid work leads to busier suburbs? So true. How many people have left the cities, New York, Chicago, places they don't need to be anymore because they can work from wherever they'd like to live, no longer where they had to live before. Um, and what's new? What's next in home design? That is a great one. If you're talking about technology, if you're talking about wellness, you could add so many cool things to that. So you're wondering, where did I get some of these really cool ideas? Oh my gosh, Carrie is so creative. Well, so true, but I can't take the credit. I mean, I could, but I won't. Let me, let me get out of my stop, stop, hold on and show. We're going to go over here, stop the share for a second and stop share. I'm going to go over here and start a new share. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to my desktop. And we are going to go to the place y'all need to go to, which is, no, not that one. Where did it go? Hello, where is it? Not that one. Where'd it go? Luxury. This is what you go to. Luxuryoutlook.com. Oh, I can't see because it's up there already. You guys see this? This is the Luxury Outlook Guide. You just go to luxuryoutlook.com and it takes you and you click on the little hamburger in the corner and it will give you all of this content. Now, by the way, what they've created for you is emails. They have created for you social media pieces already, but you also want to put your own spin on this. You want to create your own videos because video is where it's at, okay? So you have to come up with your own storylines and then you want to create your own content where you're going out into the community and looking at these things that apply to this topic. Does that make sense? No. Okay, great. All right. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. But it'll tell you, look, this is global real estate regulations and policy trends that shape investment opportunities, demographic shifts and evolution of real estate, global perspectives, emerging real estate, how the next global investment. And don't put that one. It's talking about Portugal. We don't want people to go there. How a synergy of tech tools is disrupting real estate, uh, real estate resilience, building for an uncertain future, buyers steer money towards sustainable homes. See, look, hybrid works. Now, let's say you wanted to do something about the hybrid thing. So like you click on this. This is great. This little wonderful thing actually is a beautiful background, which by the way, I've created as a little video and threw it into my iPad at the studio in Lake Nona. Now you can record yourself talking about this, stand towards the side, and you can go ahead and do it on a green screen. Then in iMovie, I just throw, or you can do it if you know how to do it, that video with your video of you on the green screen together. So you're talking about the fact about hybrid work leads to the suburb, people coming to the suburbs with this in the background. I don't know about you, but that is a beautiful background. Would you guys agree to that? So that's a really good one. Then you have, for example, more. You can just click through this way, buy or steer money towards sustainable homes. All of these I have created little videos for, um, but if you wanted to do one, if you didn't want to come to the studio, you don't have to. You could just record this part of the screen and throw it into iMovie, uh, but then you would have to record yourself on a green screen to put yourself on top of. But this is beautiful backgrounds that you can do for yourself. Now, the other really cool thing, of course, they have their report. Um, they have Are some. Are you saying that when you do that, mm -hmm. it's going to have those words still? It will, because you wanted to say that as you're talking about that topic for the first video. Then 
if you wanted to talk about sustainable homes, now you find some communities like, for example, Adena, you know, where they use absolutely no pesticide. If that's not sustainable, I don't know what is. The entire community is made up with organic food. They're going to have an organic farm there. I mean, that's all about sustainable living, right? That's yeah. the new community in Ocala that we just went in a video on, the Adena community. So if I wanted to do a whole series on a, a sustainable, I would then be in Ocala. They can go host you. We went up there and you could do a whole bunch of series of little videos on snippets, one about the farm. That's one video. One about the marketplaces. That's another video. One about the fact that even the grass or the golf, when you're walking around the community, because it's a golf community, there's no pesticides. There's no community in Central Florida at all that has no pesticides because they don't want your kids running out playing and you playing golf and being surrounded by the pesticides. I mean, think about how unhealthy that is, right? So all of these Why things- Two-story concrete block homes. Thank you, Ms. Maria, for asking. version <laughs> to termites and to wood frame. Yes. Well, thank you for asking about that. Yes. Two-story concrete block homes, which is unheard of. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a great question. I hadn't asked that question, but that would be a good thing. You can talk to the architects on site. They will be happy to answer that. Oh, but was that? I'm sure they're going to have stuff like that. But yeah, exactly. That's the stuff that you could go there and ask. So you'd want to come up with your thing and then not one video or maybe one YouTube and then break it into small little reels that you do on Instagram, right? But again, because the idea is that you're trying to find buyers that are interested, but it's also when you go to find sellers, listen, you're selling in Lake Nona. They don't have all those things, but people also like wellness. They want to be next to the medical city. They want to be, so you have to find something that is also so similar, not exactly the same where they want to be near. So that's why I would say now you're going to go to the Lake Nona um, offerings that they have monthly on the wellness sector and find out what's happening there. They have lots of things going on in the wellness center. So you want to find out all the things in the communities so that you can help tie together sellers with the buyers that you're finding that you're starting to grow in your social media content. Does that make sense? So again, when you go to here, it gives you all of this great content. The builder's confidence amongst, you know, confidence grows amid strong demand. This is a great one talking about how builders have been building more. It talks about the, the buyers ahead. This is a great little chart. This is super great because there's a lot of areas. Look at the whole Sunbridge area in Lake Nona all new build, right? Look at what's happening in Winter Garden, that whole area, tons of building. So if you want to talk about building, we've got so much area of growth. This is a great one. And then look at this. It talks about how the inventory has changed. This is a fabulous little chart. So this whole blog post here is really important. I love this one. Um, and this is a really good one. So this is all put out by us Sotheby's uh, from the Luxury Outlook. Now, if you wanted, and I probably will have to, yeah, that's this one. Hold on. This is the What's New in Home Design. This is a great one. Um, and he, let's say you're doing one on What's New in Home Design, guys. Let's talk about this for a second. What I would highly recommend doing, you could also tie this if you're doing construction. How many of you guys have the book up in the front? Can someone grab me that book up in the front with new construction? Can you grab that for me, Ariana? It's right on Jill's desk. There, We have a book right here in Dr. Phillips that has all the new construction builders here. Why wouldn't you contact them and say, hey, I'd love to know about what you're adding that's new, new in design, new in, you know, what kinds of new things you're doing, and then come and interview them, guys. Interview the builder. You know what's getting ready to come up in the spring? Does anybody know? Oh, so sad. Parade of Homes. Parade of Homes. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Where's it going to be? The Parade of Homes happens oh, everywhere. everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you guys see this book right here? This shows you all of the new construction custom builders and non-custom that are here in Central Florida. Now, I don't know how many Ocala ones are in here, 
We might need to get some more for Ocala, but you need to contact these builders. You need to say, hey, do you have an entry going into Parade of Homes? It may even tell you. you we have the new home guide right here as well. That's in all of our offices. But guys, this is resources right here for you. Why wouldn't you want to work with new construction? Okay. Now, why would you want to work with new construction if you want sellers? Are you thinking, Carrie, that seems kind of counterintuitive. I don't want to work with buyers all the time. I want to work with sellers. How do you get someone to want to sell their home, guys? You got to get them to want to move. You got to sell them another home, get them out of their home. Exactly. Half the time, you need to create the desire to make them want to move. And now you get the listing. This is another way to get a luxury listing because you get the old home, which, you know, if this is a beautiful new home, four million, three million, what do you think the home they're leaving is? Right? Not going to be a $500,000 house. Chances are, <laughs> right? You follow me? This is the point. So it's all about creating a connection. And let's face it, even though the interest rates are getting better, Maria, what's the interest rates today? 6.8, 6.8, let's not talk about the other part, but <laughs> higher sixes, let's say. Let's just say higher sixes. Shall we say that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. No, 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 no. We have nothing to do if they're included. We want to ask them if they are planning on being included. Are they going to have an entry in the Parade of Homes? And you know where else you can find that out? Goba. Mm -hmm. Greater Orlando. Goba. G -O. It's not called HBA anymore. Home Builders Association. Like you are. Um, well, there is the Home Builders Association, but Goba is the one that you would join. Greater Orlando. Uh huh. Or is it Greater Orange? What is it? I, I always called it Greater Orlando, Goba, but I don't know if it's Greater Orange. That's a great question. I've always been so steer to Orlando. <laughs> Hard to say, but GOBA is the one that we have here, yeah. But the HBA Home Builders Association is the larger organization, but GOBA is the one you join here locally. Um, but again, you want to find out what's happening. And the Parade of Homes is everywhere. That's the entire Central Florida. So, But it's important to be involved in that. And, you know, it's funny because on the home builder side, we would host people. We always had homes in the Parade of Homes and they would bust the realtors in. And I guarantee you the ones that we see coming and eating all our food would not be the ones that would be selling homes. <laughs> the ones that would sell homes would be the ones that contact us ahead. Yeah, it's Greater Orlando. Greater Orlando. Those would be the ones that would come, get the information, find all about it, that didn't have time that day to sit on a bus with a bunch of realtors to drive around and eat free food. Those are the agents who don't work, right? So we at the home builders know that. Okay. So the point is that you're being hyper productive and proactive by getting this information now. And then by interviewing them and going, just go live, go live, do a reel with them, take some video and ask them, interview them and ask them, what are they doing that is ahead of the curve? That is new technology. That why is their designs different and unique? Like come up with a couple questions. If this is your area that you can ask, what, you know, here's, here's the thing, guys. I'm going to tell you this from the builder's world. You've heard me say it a billion times, but I can say it because I've worked for a builder for years. We build boxes, guys. We all do. Why are our boxes different than the other guys? Every builder, if they don't know their value proposition, that's how they look at it. So you got to ask them what's unique and special about their box, right? How do they do it different? If they're telling you about their R value, okay, run. Okay, there's nothing great about their R value insulation. Nobody cares. Okay, like I can tell you that in Adina, they're spray foaming. That's nice, but that's not what makes the difference. Okay, the fact that they're putting up two story block is huge because in 2020, when we had supply chain issues and Orange County, and I think all over Central Florida, I don't really know, I can't speak to it. Maybe my engineer can, um, but they changed the code, which I think is horrifying and said that they no longer require block on your first floor on residential homes. I want to throw up. I mean, I think that's awful. Am I not right? That's so true. It's horrible, right? I mean, sorry guys, it leads me back to the story of the three little pigs. Where do you want to be? With the stick built, right? Where they can blow it down. <laughs> yeah. 
Of course. And they're going to tell you they're going to pass the savings on to the homeowner. And then I'm going to ask you how much do they cost? And it's environmentally friendly. Oh, yeah. It's, it's environmentally friendly. friendly or my anyway. Which are the termites, maybe. Yes, termites. <laughs> <laughs> it helps our natural uh, <laughs> yeah, residents of the termites. But when we talk about building the beginning, we showcase them and give you information. How no, we don't want to no, we so never give them. their information. We showcase the name of the builder. You want to talk to the owner, and we say for more information to contact you. We don't say anything about how to reach them. Of course, no. Why would you ever do that? We're not advertising for them. No, no, you got to be very careful. You never give, if you're doing a community walkthrough, you never tell where the community is exactly. You could say here in Central Florida, you could say in Lake Nona, but you never say, this is Sunbridge. My God, why would you do that? You never say, I'm at Toll Brothers. No, you could say I'm with one of the best builders. You know what I mean? You're going to be very careful. Because if you do, they're just going to go to Toll Brothers or they're just going to go yeah, to, exactly. yeah, so you never want to do that. But like, if you're going to talk to, you know, Chago de Vila, nobody knows who that is. So you'd say, Chago, you would talk to him that way. I'm talking to the owner of one of those amazing builders. Chago, can I ask you some questions? You're not going to ask, say, to reach out to Chago directly. No. Plus, he wouldn't want people to do that anyway. But, you know, whatever. So this is the point, guys. But this is going to help build and show also your knowledge base. Again, we have to show the public why we're different. We're different because we know so much more. And if anyone here needs some help of understanding the build quality, understanding how to talk to a builder, coming up with some questions, please let me know. I'm happy to help. There are certain things you need to ask. But the most important thing is you should always ask, what makes your building different? How do you build differently? And if they can't answer that, guys, you know, don't run right away, but you're obviously not going to publish that. What are you going to do with that? If they don't build different, what stylistically do you do differently? What is your motivation when you're building a home, right? Like there's some things you want to know. Uh, stylistically, what are you trying to accomplish? You know, whatever the case may be. If they can't give you anything, I mean, go to somebody else. Yeah, you want to say something? To an extent, but yeah, you're right. You're right. Sometimes but they say, hey, I'm a production builder and I build the same as everybody else. Um, They're not for us. They're not going to get any kind of luxury. Even if they don't know the value that they do have. Because some people, they don't realize the potential they do have. It's not going to help us in social media. Yeah. We got to get to the right people. Yeah, that's not going to be a really good uh, social media post for us, <laughs> right? <laughs> you, to your point, you're right. <laughs> that's why they're not in sales. But <laughs> you got to find the right person who understands it. But if you're talking to the owner company and they don't know, that's really bad, right? <laughs> that's a problem. But I understand what your point is, yes. Okay, um, so some some of these guys are fabulous, and you know whether you want to use the the backgrounds or how you want to use this is totally up to you. I want you to also see, and I'm going to go log in here. If you go to Sir Resources, everybody knows this is now going into access. So hang on, this may take a moment. But when you do, you can go into someone said it a great place, which is Canva for the for the brand. What is it? What's Canva for the brand? Design ball, Brad gets 50. Woo. Oh, you didn't even get pushed on that one. That was great, Brad. So good. Okay, we're going to head on in. All right, going on in. Here we go. All right. And then, okay, so as we get in here, we're going to log into Design Ball. And I want you to see if you put in Luxury Outlook, you're going to get some really nice assets. I mean, it may take us a moment, so bear with me. So you're going to go to templates and you're going to type in here, luxury outlook. Oh, see that? Campaign initiatives. See, guys, you got a bunch right here. So you have the books, so you can look at that. You have it in other languages. So if you speak Spanish, French, German, Portuguese, oh, they're calling my languages out. I love that. There you go. Um, you have them all. So let's take a peek at the English one. Just, you know, whatever, kind of boring, but let's use it. <laughs> boring, but we'll use the English one. So here they have 
Look, you can download the post. So here's the story, the standalone stories for each one with the captions that you can use. How cool is that? And these are ready to go. Yep, already here for you. Mm -hmm. So I wanted you to see it's plug and play. Now, you can start with this, but don't let that be the only thing you put out, right? You maybe start with that and then lead with your own content, definitely. Because it shows that, you know, you're coming from a place of obvious, you know, authority on the topic, right? Sotheby's is the true authority on the topic. But now let's put your own, see it has the link click here and it gives you the link, suggested captions. I mean, it tells you everything. It tells you exactly how to put this in. Couldn't get any easier, right? Gotta love that. And then if you wanted to, oops, um, I closed that at that. I hate when I do that. Sorry. We can also go into Active Pipe. And I believe, I have not looked, but I believe they have added the Luxury Outlook. Has anybody looked? I'm going to assume no. Create email. And now, one thing here, guys, so you know, when you go to your Active Pipe, you have to wait and have shared emails. You notice there's like a delay before the shared emails come up? Because everyone's like, it's not in there. I'm like, did you give it a second? Then you search for luxury uh, impressions outlook. Yep. So here's the luxury outlook. So they have the luxury outlook every month that they're doing right here. Template one. So we have them even as email templates already put in here for you. So can you actually send from here? Yes. And we can modify? Yes. So let's say you wanted to do the January. That's the invitation one. You click on it. And there it is. There's the January register. Oh, uh, this is the Sir Insider.com. This is, I picked the wrong one. Let's go back. Uh, let's say, so I would say email. Sorry. Create email. Let's go back here. Create email. See, it takes a second because first templates come up that are blank and then you have to hit the shared template. Now, luxury impressions, guys, remember that comes from us, which is great, but you want to put in luxury outlook. There it is. This one, let's look at this one. The out now, look at this one. Click here to view the luxury report. So I can hit preview. And if I click here, guess where it goes? To view the whole report. It's the whole book. How nice is that? It's already done for you. You don't even have to do it. Now, if you want, I've already uploaded this into my, uh, of course I have, presentation suite because if I want to throw my face in there and all, which of course you know I do, right? That's how I roll. Uh, we can do that for you too. Just in case you want to have your information right in here. Uh, not that you were a contributor, but you are now, right? Because <laughs> you're contributing. But yeah, here it is. So that's ready to go. And you can send that out right now. Isn't that great? Um, you're so funny. Well, I will in a bit. But... I have more content. So any questions about Luxury Outlook? I think there's some great stuff there. Okay, so now I want to stop that share and I want to start another share to go back over here. And I wanted to talk just a little bit about YouTube. Since we're, you know, I think we, we get the idea about content. It's all about content. I'm going to say Reels are doing really well on Instagram. They're great, they're short, they're easy. But I would still say I would start from YouTube. Um, now, I would highly recommend that everybody download TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is a Chrome extension. If you guys want me to do a training on it, I'd be happy to. It's free because you know me. If it's free, it's for me. But it's a great thing that really will help you do keyword finders, content finder. It's super great. T-U-B-E, buddy. Mm -hmm. But I want to take a peek at this and we're going to play this. 
So what makes a YouTube go viral? I want you to see this YouTube. We're going to watch only a few minutes of it. Trust me, I won't torture you. This video went viral. Are you one of the people that's looking to get out of the big city and move to Montana and live out in the country? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you some things about living in the country in Montana that you probably didn't think about. Like he's from Glacier Sotheby's. All right, so I climbed all the way up this mountain to give you a better view of Montana. So the least you can do is subscribe to our channel. When you do, don't forget to hit the little bell and you'll be notified every time we make a new video about Montana. We've been getting calls every week now from people that want to get out of the city and move to Montana and get away from it all. And I get that. I can't imagine living in a big city the past six months with all the lockdowns and everything. But the people that want to get away, I don't think they realize. And if you're one of them, you don't realize what you're getting into in some of these places in Montana. We can be very rural here. And I've had people call and say, I want to get way out as far out as I can, but they don't understand. I mean, we're right here in the Flathead Valley here. And even right at this point, I'm 25 minutes away from a grocery store. And the other thing that people don't think about when you're out this far is the cell service can be very poor in some areas. And you're, you're going to deal with that if, you, if your car breaks down or you need to go get groceries real quick, you're looking at a half hour drive uh, to get anywhere. And, and this is fairly close right now. There's some places Northwest of here that you can be an hour away from civilization if you wanna say that. So be careful what you wish for if you're trying to get out of the city and just look into where you're going and don't, don't think it's gonna be all <laughs> rosy to live way out because there are issues. Um, another thing, if you're out here and your car breaks down and there's no cell service, you're walking. So hopefully you can walk quite a ways uh, if you live out this far. Again, I talked about the cell or the cell service and internet connections out here. If you're trying to work remotely, keep that in mind because that will be a big issue. It's hard to get the further out you go, the harder it is to get high speed internet. The other thing we have out here is animals and a lot of them. We have bear, wolf, elk, deer. Uh, it's great, but if you live way out here, you're gonna have to be careful with your food that you leave out, dog food, whatever it may be. Uh, if you have chickens, they can you know, draw in these predators and, and they can cause problems. So if you're coming from a city, that's something you may not think about. And the other big thing people don't think about out here or what they want is everybody wants to move to Montana and, you know, I don't want any laws and I love Montana because there's no laws and I don't want covenants and I want to live out where there's no rules and I can do what I want. Well, that sounds like a great idea on paper, but the problem is, is you may take care of your property and have it the way you want, but the neighbor may move in and decide to put a bunch of old junky trailers and, and junk cars all over their property. And because there's no covenants, they can do that. So keep that in mind if you're looking to buy a place with no covenants. Okay, we don't have um, the rest of it. The other good. thing out here that you run into a lot, are you on? Okay, so are you surprised that that went viral? Shocked, right? Shocked, in fact. So Karen Carr, those of you who know her, she does a lot of training on YouTube. She knows him. She studied what the heck made this <laughs> but there's a couple things one is his hook clearly it's not the way he looks it's not that he's flashy it's not that he's funny i mean it's funny but he's not funny right but the hook is he doesn't seem like a sales pitch would you guys agree with that mm -hmm. you definitely don't feel like he's selling you right and that's really important because when you're doing a video if people feel like you're selling them they're gonna not watch Nobody wants to feel like they're being sold, especially in a YouTube video. Like if it's a short reel, they're just watching it for entertainment purposes mostly. But if they're watching a YouTube video, they're usually watching it for informational purposes. So if they feel it's a sales pitch, they're going to turn off real quick, right? Now, 
this one is really important. There was a lot of competition living in Montana. So that's why he put on there the things they don't tell you. The other thing about that is it evokes a lot of curiosity and emotion. Like, what don't they tell you? And then he told you, <laughs> which is interesting too. Um, and then he looked about the trending topics. And, you know, during the pandemic, it is true. You know what he talked about? People trying to get out of big cities. But, you know, he did talk a little bit about things that were polarizing, which we didn't even get to. He talks about policy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, we turned it off before that part. But he got a lot of comments about that. But still, at the end of the day, it was over the millions. I mean, he has so many people. So the thing is, he made people trust him because he talked about the dangers and the negatives about moving there. He used reverse psychology, right? So if people really want to move there, if you think about it, they might know, okay, yeah, it is in the middle of nowhere. You're right. I may not have cell service. I may have to worry about being far from a grocery store, but isn't that maybe one of the reasons I want to be there, right? Or it may talk him out of it, but the point is, obviously, it was not a sales pitch. And so people truly trusted that he was not trying to sell him. Clearly, he did not feel like he was trying to sell on moving to Montana. The entire video is over seven minutes, and the average viewer watched more than 50% of this video. I know. It's scary, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. intentional that it was reverse psychology? I don't know. I don't believe that it was because he called Karen and said, I don't know why people are watching my videos. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yes. So you know, we talked about doing the YouTube video and then it's for Instagram, but the formats are different. So well, so I'm saying the content. Okay. So you would do a whole content piece, but take snippets and then turn it into like music and things like that. But isn't that the format like Horizontal and then Instagram is vertical. Yes, but so while you're filming, oh. then you would turn and film some at the same oh, location. Like yes, yes, while, while the you're there. Exactly. The exactly. exactly. Okay. While you're there. Exactly. Yeah, obviously it can't be the same. Yeah. Exactly. But you're still there, is what I'm saying. While you're there, you've got your content, you've got your, you already know what you're saying, what you're doing, but you have to turn and, yes, 150%. Yeah. But you know what I mean? You're not recreating the wheel. And you're also the same. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. No, but it was not a stupid question. It was a good question. Um, the interesting thing too is that you did you notice the thumbnail did not show his face? Did you guys remember that? So if we went back and I will show you just to remind you, this is his thumbnail. It doesn't show his face. And so do you guys know what an A-B test is? And this is another thing that they have in the um, TubeBuddy. An A-B test means that you could do the same video, but change the thumbnail and see how each one runs. And a lot of uh, agents and, and advisors, we're advisors, so I wouldn't say us, but agents on the other side, they always love to show their face. And they think that people connect with them because it's their face. But what they have found nine out of 10 times is that the ones without their face do better. And I'm going to tell you, it's unless you're doing it because you're trying to get the recognition of the people that know you who want to click on it. But a lot of times, especially with YouTube, you're not. You're trying to get people who don't know you, right? And the point is, if they see your face, oftentimes they think it's a sales pitch. That's the difference. So when you don't put your face on it, that's the point. They don't think it's a sales pitch. They think it's more content driven. Interesting, right? So these are things to think about. Again, a reel, if you're doing an Instagram reel, it's different. It's more entertainment purposes. There's not a lot of people, um, you know, they're, they're going to watch it. It's short. They, who can commit to a 30 second? Pretty much anybody, right? I mean, how long are reels? Like the longest reels, what? Maybe two minutes? I mean, because they could be longer on Instagram than they can on TikTok. But realistically, people will commit to that. But a video on YouTube, people are going there for true content. So if they see someone's face, they're already going to be like, eh. unless they know that person and like the kind of content that they give, 
they may be more turned off by seeing someone's face. They really rather see if they're talking about an area, a community, a, something. They want to see something about what they're looking for. Does that make more sense? All right. So when we talk about creating that marketing funnel, remember, you're trying to attract people to eventually convert them into somebody who wants to see more. Then you have to engage them consistently so that eventually you can sell them on some kind of something to make them want to engage with you. That's the thing. Online leads are longer. They really are longer. If your content is better and they're going to something for more specific purposes, it's quicker. Does that make sense? So if someone just happens upon something you don't know, and this is the thing, like when I would say to people, well, when people walk into a builder, oftentimes would buy with me on their first visit. Like I said, 93% of the time they buy with me on the first visit. The reason is because it was not their first visit looking, guys. That's the reality. Maybe the first visit with me, but let's not begin to think it was their first visit. That's not true. First of all, they began their search forever ago online. We know that. They began thinking about buying. And I think something made them wake up and drive into a builder that day. And realistically, they probably stopped at other builder's models before too. They just didn't tell me that. And if I didn't help them find something there, they would have left me and gone somewhere else and found it. So that's the reality of that. So you have to understand it's the same thing here. If you can help them narrow down and get an idea of what they're looking for, then you can connect with them. But how do you connect with somebody online? And this is the number one problem. You need to give them something more in your videos. For a link, a downloadable guide to learn more about something, click on the link below. Always have a giveaway of sorts to make them go somewhere else, which is a great place like your website where they can start playing and looking at searches, where they can start looking at more content, where because now you hook them. That's where you engage them is on your website. But if you just have a video, what do you have? You're creating a fan. Maybe eventually they'll reach out or maybe they'll go to the builder next door right? That's the problem. But if you're constantly giving them something to connect with you, like a downloadable guide to learn more about this, to see more awesome new technology, to see more communities that are similar, you always have something and you should talk about it in your video. Click on the link below to see other communities that have similar new technology. Click on the link below for your downloadable guide for relocating to this area. Click on the link below. Always have a link below and tell them in the video what they're going to get when they click on it. Because otherwise, why are they going to click on it, right? You have to give them something. Otherwise, why are they going to go there? Or maybe if it's Instagram and you can't have a click on a link, have as a last frame a QR code. You know, take a picture of the QR code for your free blah, 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 blah. You can always add that into Instagram. How often do we see that? We don't. But you're not, you're missing an opportunity because it just dies there. So great, you get great traction, but where does it go? Oh. Nowhere. You always can have a call to action, but it's got to be good. It's got to be something they want. Does that make sense? Because otherwise the funnel just dies. You engage with them. That's where it stops. Does that make sense? Or maybe just attract at them. <laughs> it really just depends, right? Okay. So, oh, here it is. Here is TubeBuddy. You guys see this? So you want to make sure that you go to the Chrome extension. So, and you, you have to obviously be in Chrome and you download TubeBuddy. It will connect to your YouTube channel. And then you get all of these cool things. Now, of course, is there a paid version? There is always a paid version. Do I use a paid version? No, you know me. I don't ever use paid versions. If I tell you I pay for something, it's got to be really, really good. I've used the free version forever. So these are some really cool things. You can, right from here now, fix your playlist, add comments. There's an Autobot that you can have a comment thing going. You know, thanks for watching, whatever. You can create an Autobot. I think you only get one for free, but 
super cool. The analytics are so much better. And it's not just your analytics. It now goes, if you watch any YouTube, the analytics will appear and you can see how well that video has done. Where people stopped watching. If they had good keywords, you can see all the analytics for any YouTube you watch. It's super cool. Then it has the Keyword Explorer, the SEO Studio. These things are super great. I love the video topic planner. So let's say you decided you wanted to do something on builders. You can start coming up with ideas of what you want your videos to be about so that you don't forget about them. Here's your tag list. So the great thing is, like, for example, let's you go to some Sotheby's videos and you see which ones are performing the best. You see which tags they're using, which hashtags. You copy them and you paste them right here. You should be creating the hashtags that you want to be using and be consistent with them. So this is where you can do that. Um, when to publish. The more you use and publish, it will tell you when your audience is watching. And it'll tell you the best time for you to publish. So that's a really great one. And then um, it'll also have more information here, for example, on your AB. Like if you want to put one video out with one type of a, a picture and one video out with another type of um, picture. And you can see which one performs better and that kind of thing. So it's got all sorts of opportunities for you right here. So this is TubeBuddy. And here's the keyword explorer. So look, I put in home sales 2021 versus 2020 explore. And you see, look at how many people were looking at that. But also the competition was so high. So I would never have done a video on that because too many people were. That was the problem. So when you look at it, I want to say, well, I like the concept because a lot of people were interested, but I don't want to do exactly that. So I wanted to start searching to get an idea of what's similar to that, but not as widely being done. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I don't really like spy fry. It's okay. And then this is something that you could put in uh a, a to find out how the domain has been working and to see if it's been doing well but although i will tell you uh, it will give you an idea of the analytics and this is premier versus sotheby's but also by just using tubebuddy you will get those analytics as well and that's a really cool thing so when you're pulling it up it'll tell you how something is performing where people also on your own it'll say look somebody only watched the first 25 seconds or they watched the first three minutes or the so you can notice like oh gosh people keep dropping off at this time in my video and you'll say you know what i keep doing the same thing here i'm going to swap around how i do my videos which is really helpful information so i think there's so many great things about tubebuddy Okay, so questions. Does anybody have questions about anything we've covered today? Does, do you think you got any ideas how to get some luxury listings out of this? No. Okay. I have nothing to help you with that. I'm really feeling at a loss. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, maybe. Lots of ideas. Always what I'm here for on a bright, sunny. I said I got lots of ideas. I love that, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to say thank you so much, guys, for joining. And tomorrow we are not doing social media. I have to be at the board for uh, standards. You going to standards training, Barbara? Barbara? No. Oh, not no. going to standards training. Well, no. I won't see you there. The board has to be there. Okay. We have to be making sure we're doing the right thing. <laughs> but uh, so I will not see you guys at standards training then. Uh, I mean, at uh, social media training. But anybody who wishes to use the, um, I have already put in to the iPad all those videos. So if you want to have them, they're already ready in the iPad. The iPad's in my office. So feel free to use that if you want to go and start doing some social media there. Um, but if anybody wants to meet with me and do some social media training on Thursday, I will be in Lake Nona, happy to do any. If we want to start having meetings, uh, be social media meetings too, we can do that as well. So looking forward to seeing you guys. Have a great rest Thanks. of your Thanks Bye. so much, Carrie. Thanks, Chris. Bye. Bye.